Yo, what's up guys and welcome to the Silent Assassin Suit Only Walkthrough of Hitman 2 Colorado on the Legacy Pack on Master Mode. My name is Mr. Freeze 2244 but before we get into the video, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Also, if you missed any of these Silent Assassin Suit Only Walkthroughs of Master Mode so far, there's a link in the description of the full playlist of videos. Now for this one, I'm going to bring along my lockpick, regular pistol, start in the default location, and bring along the syringe. Ignore the fact that I'm showing remote audio distraction, that doesn't work, don't bring that, just bring along your lethal syringe and your lockpick. And those are the two items that are only, the only things that are going to come in use, apart from the pistol of course. Now this is a highly requested video, many many comments and many many suggestions that have been doing to me to do this, and to be fair it was the diff most difficult one of all of them on the legacy pack. However, it's uh, not that difficult in the end when you actually complete this kind of entire guide, because it's not that bad. Two of the targets we're going to take out with a syringe, and uh, that's it's going to be very simple in the end. So we're going to crouch through, through this area here and shoot out that camera. That's the first camera we're going to be taken care of. We're not going to be taking out the evidence in this. We're going to be taking out the cameras as we go. There's going to be a camera just up there, but it's not going to spot us. We're just going to wait for this dude to turn around, drop down, and then crouch run around this area here. Now, f uh, footsteps aren't as audible, audible, sorry, I should say, as uh, professional mode in season one. So it's not that bad on master mode in regards to moving quickly. You can actually move a little bit more faster than you can than you used to be able to on season one. So we're going to crouch run all the way through this area here until we get to this door. Once we come through this door, we're just going to chill in this area for a minute. And one minute's time, uh, Maya Pravati is going to come out of the barn, and that's when we're going to shoot the hay bale that's just above the barn and uh, that's going to take her out for an accident kill and then we can move on to our next target we are going to stick relatively close to uh, the route that we took for the very first walkthrough we ever did for this and i tried a different route and it was just too more too difficult and too inconsistent for me to actually put a video out for it this is the reason why i'm choosing this route again going anti-clockwise around the map once more so at this current point point in time we've got about 20 more seconds and then we're going to uh, shoot the hay bale up over our head now, it's always best to stay in the area I am right now. Why? It's because there's a guard around the corner who can spot you if you're like too close to the scaffolding uh, at the start. So we're just going to shoot this rope as she passes underneath it, using the minimap as a reference. And once you shoot the hay bale, they'll get you in an accident kill. So that's the first target down, so we're going to run, crouch run through this area over here until we get to this fence. Obviously stick into the tall grass whenever you can. That's the, not one of the changes that were introduced with Hitman 2. This guy's going to turn around and that's when we're going to pass through the gates and around him. So I'm just going to wait for him to turn around. Obviously I'm using the clock as a helpful guide for you guys to try and keep up with me. Obviously I skipped the opening cutscene as well, the opening panning shot of when Diana starts talking. So that's obviously you can take that into consideration and everyone's movement should be exactly the same as what's shown on my screen. Now this guard over here is going to be standing next to this gate on the left and eventually, eventually he's going to go and talk to this guard to the right and as soon as he starts walking that's when we immediately want to approach the gate to his left and the lock pick the gates and get through. We're going to crouch run all the way through this section here leap over this barrier then hide behind these boxes here. There's going to be two guards that are in this shed here. They're going to be talking to each other. The guard that we can see in front of us is going to turn around. And uh, once he turns around again, that is when we're going to approach him. And then KO him. And then dump him in the crate. We're going to leave, leave his weapon on the floor. But we also need to take his disguise as well a little bit later on. So as soon as you can, just uh, go ahead and subdue him. And then stick his body in the crate. We're going to get in these bushes right here and take out this camera. We're going to shoot the fuse box once uh, we know that Ezra Berg is inside the shed talking to the guard. That is Ezra Berg. Now on season one, Ezra Berg will usually come out, but however the guard is coming out this time. So we're going to leap through the window while Ezra Berg is in this position. He should always be in this position for you guys. We're going to eliminate him any way you want to. The guard outside is going to take care of the fuse box, but when he goes out he's going to see the weapon that was, that was hidden on the floor that the guard dropped and he's going to take that away so he isn't going to be of concern so we're going to pick up all the stuff that Ezra Berg dropped so that will take care of our second target we're going to crouch walk out of this area now 
up to this point here. These two guards should have their backs to you. If not, you want to wait for them to actually have their backs turned to you like they are in this place. And you're going to see this guard here on his binoculars. Now, if you're quick enough, you should be able to get past. And then you can want to crouch walk past this gate. If you don't crouch walk past the gate, you are going to get spotted. So make sure you are slow when you're walking past there. Because the faster you go, the faster they spot you. Once you get to this point right here, this is where I recommend you drop a save. Obviously, you're only allowed one save point in master mode. So that's the point where I'm going to drop a save. I'm going to shoot that camera out there. Lockpick this gate. And we're going to pass all the way through the section, crouch running through the grass and trying to get over here as quick as we can. Now this guard has just gone to investigate the camera shot, so we're going to stay in this uh, bunch of grass over here. Crouch walk. Shoot out this camera. Now this guard immediately is going to turn around. Hide behind this little uh, lawnmower here. And then circle around it. He isn't going to spot you if you do that right. You just get behind that lawnmower so he doesn't spot you. I'm going to tamper with this clock right here. Look around for where the hacker's positions are in that room. Once they've got all their backs to you, you want to open this door. Now, if you have kept up with me up to this point, you should have no problems getting through this area. And all the positions of the guard should be exactly the same. We're going to subdue this guard, leave his weapon on the floor. And, uh, actually, we don't even need to do that. We're just going to grab this syringe here. I was thinking of another strategy, don't worry. But now we have, now we have two syringes. So once we've got to these two syringes, now it's going to hide in this crate. So we have two targets, two syringes, and you obviously can see where this is going to go. Now, Sean Rose is going to come in momentarily. And once he does that, another guard is going to come in behind him. His guard is going to go upstairs, and we're going to time our mo uh, moment on when we're actually going to syringe him. And we're going to need to drag Sean Rose down the stairs. That is Sean Rose, terrorist so keep an eye on the uh, what he's saying, and I'll stab him with a syringe when I do. There we go. As soon as he hits that line, stab him with a syringe. Drag his body a little bit away behind the wall. Use your instinct to see where all the hackers are. And once you're clear, and once everyone has their back to you, you can be patient with this, don't worry about it. Once everyone has their back to you, you can drag the body a little bit slightly down the stairs. And we're going to leave his body here for now. Now we've got one more target remaining, and that's Penelope Graves. So uh, we're going to get just... We've got another bit, little bit more time, so what we're going to do is just drag uh, Sean Rose's body to this door and we're going to leave him here for now and then we're pretty much going to do uh, almost the same thing as uh, for Penelope Grace. Oh, there is a slight difference to what we're going to do so we pretty much have to just wait in this area right now she's going to come in look at the clock make a comment and she's going to go into the room to our right and she's going to make a few comments in there and eventually she's going to pass the door and head towards the the front of the house again as she passes the door that is when we're going to syringe her and we can leave her body there. We don't have to hide her body or anything like that. Purely because it's a poison kill. And even if the body is found. It's not going to count against your silent assassin rating. So all, all we're doing at this point really. Is just relying on patience. And just waiting for her to get in the right position for us. So again after a minute or so. She's going to be doing exactly what I said. Once she passes the door. We'll open the door. The door is going to act as a bit of cover for us. Even if there is another hacker there, he won't spot us as we're uh, stabbing him with a syringe. And that's all four targets taken care of, so we're just going to use Sean Rose's body at the bottom of the stairs right here, at the bottom of the door. And we're going to scan his face with a face scanner, and we're home free, pretty much. Like I said, the body's found there, but don't worry about it, it's a poison kill. It's not going to negate your son assassin rating. And uh, what we need to do at this point is just look at all three of these clues that are on the wall. One, two, there's going to be one on the desk as well, and we're going to exit the mission. And we'll get our Sonic Assassin rating. Well, Sonic Assassin suit only, of course. But overall, um, it was very difficult to work out because obviously the audio distraction doesn't work anymore from my previous walkthrough for this. And um, so I had to come up with a different solution. And it turns out, I think this one's probably a little bit easier. In fact, this is a very minimal risk, really, as long as you are timing everything perfectly right. You, are, have, you have got a lot more time than you think you do. So you shouldn't have to worry too much once you get inside the house. But uh, you get all these, all of these things are, are from just me, this one single run. I got all of these things from the one single run. Fifty-nine thousand XP. 
And it, on legacy mode, I'll tell you, on Hitman 2, it's very, very easy to level up on here. So you won't even have to do all the challenges to get to Master Level 20. And I know people think it's going to be a huge grind to get to Master Level 20 in all these maps to get all your unlockable back. But seriously, just do it on Master, on Silent Assassin suit only, and you'll get up to at least level 10. Look, I'm on level 12 already, but that's how you do a Silent Assassin suit only on Colorado. So that's going to do it for this video, so thank you very much for watching. Feel free to drop a like on the video if it helped you out or if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you are brand new to the channel, and hit the bell notification to be notified of all future videos and live streams. Consider supporting me on Patreon or even becoming a member of the channel. And um, these credits will be updated over the next couple of days of all the new members and all the new patrons. I really do appreciate all the new members and the new patrons that have joined the channel. And uh, your credits will be shown for the next month within a couple of days. So again, thank you very much for all the new pledges and all the new members. And I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.